Now I'd like to talk about conservation of momentum. And recall from previous work that for a single particle, uh, the beginning momentum plus the impulse is equal to our ending momentum. This same equation applies for a system of particles such that the sum of the beginning momentums plus the sum of any impulses equals the sum of the ending momentums. So that would be the mass times velocity of each particle. So a system, uh, all systems have a center of gravity and that the, the impulse, the integral of FDT that acts on a system changes the momentum of the center of gravity. In other words, if you have two particles traveling together, there's a center of gravity someplace. If the impulse acts on the individual particles, they act on the center of gravity of the system. And the syst then the system, the center of gravity of the system, obeys the general momentum rules. Uh, and so we're talking about external forces now, external to the particle or external to the system. They cause changes in momentum. This is the impulse. Uh, however, sometimes the only forces acting on a system are, um, are internal forces, meaning they act equal opposite on each other. And so internal forces, if they apply to systems, uh, the, uh, internal forces apply to systems, not to single particles. So if the forces that the particles act on each other are equal and opposite in direction, they cancel each other out. So an explosion would be uh, an example of that, recoil of a weapon, um, uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, cars on barges and uh, people on skateboards and things like that. So any, any time that uh, the, the impulses that the act on a particular person or particle are the same impulses that act on the other person or particle, they cancel each other out and we're going to call that, uh, suggest that the internal forces, the sum of the internal forces are equal to zero. And uh, however, you, you would need to consider them if you're trying to find out the actual impulse of the particle itself, of the single particle within the system. So, uh, the conclusion then is that the only particle, if the only forces that act on a system are internal forces, they cancel each other out, and we have the conservation of momentum that says that the sum of the beginning momentums equals the sum of the ending momentums of the, of the two pieces. So again, conservation of momentum applies to a system of particles. You have to have more than two or more. Recall that with energy, the conservation of energy could uh, apply to only one particle for sure. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll be looking for two particles in our conservation of momentum calculation. All right, um, so here's a little example of a guy jumping onto a boat. And it suggests that uh, he weighs 150 pounds, the boat weighs 200 pounds. Uh, he's gonna jump with a speed relative to the boat of three feet per second. The boat at the time is traveling two feet per second. So he's jumping off, he's catching the boat, boat's taking off without him, he's jumping onto the boat, and we wanna find out what the speeds of the, of the boat are and the speed of the man are after they join together, after he lands in the boat. So after the jump, the system is the man in the boat and there are no in external forces. He's jumping and he's flying and so there's no um, no forces pushing him or any impulses on him per se. So we're going to use the relative equation. We're going to say the velocity of the man is equal to the velocity of the boat plus the velocity of the man with respect to the boat. Now this is the Vm with respect to B is given in the problem. It says that he can jump three or is jumping three feet per second relative to the boat. So I can just find out the velocity of the man is equal to the velocity of the boat is two, the velocity of the man is three, man with respect to the boat is three. So he's going five total, that's his actual speed now, is 5 in the x direction or in the y direction. Now the conservation of momentum applies so that we can say the sum of the beginning momentums equals the sum of the ending momentum. So here's his beginning momentum, he's going, here's his mass, uh, he's going 5 feet per second in the x direction. The boat is this, the boat's mass, it's going 2 feet per second in that direction, and at the end they're joined together. So if they have a common velocity, and so we want to sum the masses together. So here are the sum of the masses together, and we have our common velocity, which we're solving for. We're saying that the vote uh, the, together, uh, they're going to go 3.285 feet per second in the I direction after they're, uh, after they're together, we'll say. All right, and here's another little problem then. Uh, this is a three particle rectilinear, meaning in one direction kind of situation. Very similar. Uh, we always, uh, or we, we will generally start with a relative equation 
You can start with the momentum equation, but most often you have to do uh, the relative equation, uh, eventually anyway. So uh, let's just start with the relative equation. Here we're going to say that the 80 pound boy and a 60 pound girl are walking toward each other on this cart. It's given in the problem, it says the velocity is measured relative to the cart. So he's walking three feet per second relative to the cart. She's walking two feet per second in that direction relative to the cart and they're going to meet in the middle here. And uh, so let's write the relative equations for each one. We're going to say the velocity of A is equal to the velocity of the cart plus the velocity of A with respect to the cart. And again, A with respect to the cart was given in the problem, so VA is equal to VC plus 3. He's going in that direction. That'll be our positive I direction. The girl. I put VB here for girl, so don't get confused. That's not boy. That's a particle B. So VB is going to be equal to VC plus V with respect to C. All right, v of B with respect to C. And again, B with respect to C was given in the problem. It says this person is going two feet to the left, going in that direction. So I'll say that the velocity of the particle B is equal to the velocity of C minus two, because it's going in the negative direction. All right, I have two relative uh, equations here. I got, uh, I got two equations and three unknowns, so I can't really do too much with that yet. So let's start with the moment, momentum equation and see what we can get. We know that the sum of the momentums uh, is equal to the ending momentums. And uh, how do we know that this equation applies? Well, this is the conservation of momentum equation. And we know that it applies because there are no external forces in this problem. The force that the boy exerts on the cart is the same force that the cart re-exerts back on the boy. The same with the girl. The, these two are not interacting with each other yet until they meet in the middle and smack together, I suppose. Um, but right now there are no impulses other than what they are doing to each other uh, so the conservation of momentum applies. So again, beginning momentum is equal to zero. They're all starting from rest then they begin to walk and we're going to say that the sums of the masses times velocities are equal to zero. Alright, so let's just put the masses of the boy, the beginning velocity, I'm going to take from that equation, the mass of the girl the beginning velocity from this equation, and then the velo uh, mass of the cart is 300, kilo or 300 pounds, and we're looking for the velocity of the cart. All right, now I have a third equation. I got two equations, now a third equation, and now I can start solving, and I can find out the velocity of the cart, and the velocity of the boy, particle A, and the velocity of the girl, particle B. And you can see, you can do the math and make sure that uh, I did that correctly. All right, so here are the three velocities. The cart is actually going to be going in the negative i direction when we're done. And uh, the boy is going in the positive i direction, which we'd expect. The girl is going in the negative i direction, again, which is what we would expect. All right, uh, what we're also looking for is the distance that the cart traveled uh, the, at the instant the boy and the girl meet. All right, in order to be able to do that, uh, we need to, we have the speed of the cart, and if we knew how much time was involved, maybe we could find out how far the cart moves. So we're looking for the distance the cart travels. All right, we can find the time by understanding that the boy and the girl are moving toward each other. They have to move a relative distance of 20 feet. We've discovered their actual speeds, so we can set up the relative equation that looks like this. We're going to say the velocity of A is equal to the velocity of B plus the velocity of A with respect to B. I've got my actuals now, so the velocity of A is 2.73 going in that direction. The velocity of B is negative 2.27 going in that direction. And, uh, and that equals the velocity of A with respect to B. And I can solve that for the velocity of A with respect to B is 5. So that's 5 feet per second. They're moving toward each other. The distance they traveled are 20 feet. The time that it took was four seconds, or uh, the, and so the time is going to be equal to the 20 feet divided by the speed, and I get time is equal to four seconds. Now that I have four seconds for the total interaction, I can plug four seconds back into um, a S is equal to VT equation for the cart. So the distance the cart moves is the velocity of the cart times the time, and I can find out that the cart moves one foot. All right, uh, let's keep going. We, uh, sometimes uh, energy is uh, uh, required to uh, be worked in combination with momentum. 
And uh, here's an a interesting example here is that we have a cart and a box. And uh, at the instant the, the problem starts, the spring is compressed a little bit. And so there's some built-in potential energy into our system. We're going to release the spring. It's going to move the box this way. The cart, because the spring's attached to the cart, the cart will move that way. Okay, so we know that there's going to have some separation anxiety there. They're going to move relative to each other apart. Um, but we know that the concept or that uh, um, energy applies in this situation. Um, and so we can start with an energy equation. Turns out that the surface of the cart versus the box is smooth. So uh, we don't have any uh, any friction losses there. Uh, so what, but what, what we can, so we can say that the beginning energy built into the spring is going to be the sum of the energies of the two after they separate. All right. So I got my energy equation T1 plus V1 plus U0 is equal to T2 plus V2. I start with some energy of one half KS squared built into the spring, and at the end I'm going to have some energy of the box going in that direction of one half mv squared, some energy of the cart going in that direction of one half mv squared, and I can sum those together and put those in there. All right, uh, so when I did my math, 300 uh, newtons per meter for the spring constant, it has been compressed uh, 0.2 meters, and I can find that that side is six. Over here, I got one half the mass of the cart, excuse me, mass of the block. Uh, uh, the box is 50 kilograms, the mass of the cart is 75 kilograms, and I can uh, fill in the blanks here. So anyway, I got one equation with two unknowns. I need another equation to be able to find out what I need to know. So let's try our momentum equation. Momentum, again, is conserved because there are no external forces to our system. The only forces in the system are what the box and the spring uh, and the cart interact on each other. There's no uh, outside forces pushing or pulling on this thing, so the momentum equation applies. Now, if I had friction in here, friction would begin to apply um, uh, after the box and the cart are moving relative to each other and they would slow down. Uh, we may be able to, if friction was a, uh, was a factor during the decompression of the spring, we may be able to ignore that. That's one of those things where uh, if the distance is small uh, and the force of friction times that distance may be small compared to the total energy released from the spring. So in this case we don't have friction so we don't have to take that into account but uh, be cautious of that. Okay, <clears throat> so our momentum equation is we have the beginning momentum is equal to the ending momentum. And so I start with zero momentum, I end up with separate momentums of each piece, and I got 50 uh, kilograms for the box and times its speed, 75 kilograms for the cart times its speed. And then I can solve my, I now have three, uh, two equations, two unknowns. I got an equation here and an equation here, and I can solve for the velocity of the box and the velocity of the cart. And those are <coughs> the answers. I'm seeing that the box goes <coughs> to the right of two point, at 2.53 uh, uh, meters per second. And this will be in meters per second. And the cart will go in that direction. <coughs> Excuse me. 3.795 meters per second. Now, that's not what the question was asking for. Let's see what it says. Determine the speed of the block with respect to the cart after the spring becomes deformed, uh, undef undeformed. All right, now I have my actual speeds. In order to get the, the answer to the question, determine the speed of the block with respect to the cart, I have to use a relative equation. All right, so let's put our relative equation, VB is equal to VC plus V of B with respect to C, and we can build that equation up and find out the velocity of B with respect to C is equal to 0.623 meters per second, and that's the answer we're looking for. Okay, then the last thing that, uh, that we should talk about is um, uh, conservation of momentum is, uh, is conserved, or co momentum is conserved during uh, collisions when they, well, during collisions in general, we're going to talk about impact uh, next time, but um, in this case, the, colli uh, the two particles are sticking together and move with a common speed after they're done.
So uh, when that happens, you, uh, we, uh, we do have a loss of energy due to noise and deformation and, uh, and uh, lots of energy lost. However, momentum is still conserved. And that could be a little counterintuitive to some. But anyway, we have a car that's moving in this direction, car A, and a car moving in this direction, car B, and they collide in this intersection, and after the collision, we're saying that they go up in this direction, um, uh, 50 kilometers per hour for some amount of time, and go on in that uh, 30 degree angle. And we're, we're the uh, investigators here, and we, we see that they're going in that direction after the collision. We want to find out what their speeds were uh, before they collided. And again, what they're, when they collide, they stick together, so we have a beginning momentum and an ending momentum that, uh, that works. Now we, uh, we have to do this in both X and Y. That's uh, the caveat, is that because, uh, because these are vectors, we have to do two equations. So let's do the momentum equation in the x-direction. So I'll, have, I'll say that the sum of the momentums in the x-direction uh, in condition 1 is equal to sum of the momentums in the x-direction condition 2. So MA, VA, MB, VB. And then at the end, because they're sticking together, I'm going to say that we have the sum of the, the uh, masses times our ending speed. All right, you can see how I did that. I have a cosine component here. I go to straight component here. So this would be uh, two. Oh, and the mass of uh, car A is 2,000 uh, kilograms. This car guy is uh, 1,500 kilograms. So I have a cosine component going that direction. Got a straight component here. After the after they're done, I got 3,500, and it's given that the speed is 50 kilometers per hour in uh, in that direction. So my x direction would be the sine component. And I can get that in the y direction. I have this component, which would be the sine component of 45. This guy has no momentum in the, in the y direction to, to start with. Obviously, together, they have some y momentum at the end. But I just sum those things up. And I'm going to say in the beginning, I have 2,000. In the y direction, it would be sine 45. This one is 0. And then at the end, I got 3,500, and then my, my ending speed would be 50, and then this would be the cosine component here of 30. And add those things up, and I, I can solve for VA and plug that back into here and solve for VB. So here are my two speeds. So if you were the policeman investigating this accident, uh, you could, by conclusion, then figure out what each... Uh, each, the speed of each was uh, at the time of the collision and figure out who needs to get the, the citation. All right, uh, that concludes our talk on conservation of momentum for now. <laughs>